Hello YouTube, Hook is back again with uh, some uh, gazelle action today. I wanted to make a video demonstrating some tactics that uh, may be uh, well known by some of you, but for newer pilots or for others getting used to the uh, certain models of the gazelle, uh, you might be able to find these useful. Uh, something I've heard uh, from some other gazelle pilots I know is that uh, utilizing the inversion by yourself without a second player in multi-crew is a very challenging and uh, I, I think that it is a little bit task saturating but um, I think that it's very doable uh, with some practice in fact I'm more comfortable uh, flying the gazelle by myself now than I am in a helicopter like the K-50 or an SU-25T where there's a high pilot workload so I was going to give you guys some tips that I use maybe it'll help you maybe it won't but uh, the first thing I generally do is I actually will fence in the gazelle uh, well before going into combat, meaning I'm going to turn on all the Vivian systems, uh, the TV display, uh, I'm going to uncover the uh, fire safety switch, select the pylon, and generally if I use anything for my master arm, I'll use the key, the uh, control panel key, but I'm going to go ahead and fence him fully. And uh, one thing that's easy to happen in the Gazelle is to lose track of your Vivian display, so just hit your recentering key there to get on the same page. And I've got a convoy up there for us. Um, it looks like I've got sight of them now. What I'm going to do is just go ahead and engage uh, some of those targets. Looks like uh, currently my range is about 4.6k, which is a little, a little far even for the uh, modded Hellfires I'm using. But uh, probably closer now, so I'm going to take a fire at that lead BTR. Okay, that was a good hit on him. Immediately going to follow up by switching to a new weapon. And uh, we'll look for that smoke. And scan for our next shooter. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind is in any attack plane is you want to be careful how close you get to these guys. That looks like a ZS-23 uh, Mike Mike there. So I'm going to fire on that. And this will be my last run before I turn off hot here. Missile's looking pretty good. I am taking some fire. So I'm going to go ahead and take what I got there. Make an aggressive turn. All right, so target. coming back around here for a second pass, I generally will break off and uh, conduct my return to target maneuver at about 2K. Uh, try not to get too much closer than that if they have shooters, and then uh, you know turn back in right when I'm about 5K. Uh, remember the information on the Vivian's real helpful. Uh, you have your displacement D being right and G being left from the nose. Also the uh, actual magnetic bearing. So we're going to try to take out another shooter here. Uh, I'm going to use a actual tow missile this time since I'm also using some of my modded weapons. So there's a tow release. Uh, identified another shooter here who's actively firing at me. Hopefully we'll get him before he gets us. All right, good. Got him. And again, we're going to break off hot here. Uh, you can handle the uh, gazelle pretty aggressively, um, but you've got to make sure to put a lot of pedal in for those types of maneuvers. That's one thing I found pretty quickly. And remember, she doesn't have the power of some of the larger helicopters, uh, especially when loaded. Now, I am using a mod today that adds Hellfires. That's something that's available on the forums if you're interested. But the uh, tactics I'm demonstrating here also apply to uh, just the standard Hot 3 missiles. And finally, the last piece of advice I would give you when flying the mic by, uh, by yourself is uh, stay in the left seat. Uh, treat your your uh, Vivian screen kind of as, a, kind of as your, uh, your Chabal display in a K-50 or SU-25. You know, uh, focus on flying first if you can. Uh, one thing that, that is not possible in a real Gazelle is uh, because the HOT3, the tow system, is basically integrated off of a system that's made to be man po uh, portable or vehicle fired. Um, they've, they've kept the interface pretty simple, meaning that there, you know, there's an actual joystick controller here and a TV and a separate uh, weapons commander or a pilot commander uh, grip there on the left, WSO grip rather. And uh, because of that, the uh, co-pilot cannot have his hands on the throttle and stick or the collective and stick. But uh, as in the Sim Gazelle, you have the advantage of rebinding the controls however you like. So I would recommend putting uh, those controls on your HOTAS. That'll give you the uh, opportunity 
looks like a truck there. That'll give you the opportunity to uh, fire your weapons while still maintaining, maintaining control of the helicopter. So uh, we'll move on to the Lima version next year. I guess I'll fire one more missile. Looks like I've taken out most of their shooters. And uh, one thing I try to really uh, do when I fire these types of weapons is just minimize cursor movement. Um, you know, if you have to change targets mid-flight, then that's something you may not be able to avoid. But as you can see there, my movement did bleed a little energy from the weapon. And uh, there's still just a little bit of cursor shake here uh, that's still work in progress by Polychop. Although it looks like something did pop down there, so that's pretty cool. All right, we'll move on to the Lima next. Okay, guys, we're back now on a Lima Gazelle. Now, the Lima seems simple uh, in, in principle. You know, it has basic weapons, a cannon and rockets. But uh, there's an added uh, layer of uh, capability here that I really wanted to cover uh, with the Lima. And that's the fact that you have, um, even though you retain those dumb guided weapons, you still have a very advanced optic here to add your situational awareness. Now, if you're in something like a Huey, uh, you really got no choice but to go after the bad guys and uh, see if you can kill them before they kill you. In the Lima, uh, your situational can be uh, situational awareness is much higher. You can identify targets and uh, know what to try to prioritize or if it's even safe to make your run in. So, once again, got all my systems going here and I'll recenter my optic. I know there's a convoy up there and this convoy has a couple shooters in it and I'm going to use my uh, optic on this uh, gazelle to identify uh, what's the threat and what's the priority for me to take out there. And then I'll see if I can take them out before I even move in. Okay, so there's our convoy. Uh, I can see there's two BTR-80s, uh, and it looks like Euro 375 trucks. So the real threat there is the BTR-80s. So not only have I identified the priority threat, but I'm actually going to attempt to take them out here uh, with rockets. So going back to the pilot seat. Now you can still look out over and control your optic, which I often do on the left side, but it's a little bit of a stretch. So I'm going to try to focus on the target here as I get closer. Uh, also, unlike the Huey, you can arrange your threat. So I can see that it uh, looks like 2,900 uh, meters away. So I have a pretty good idea of how close I'm getting to them and their capability to engage me. Alright, so I know that the uh, priority threats are at the front of the convoy, so uh, this is the point where I just got to get out there and see if I can kill them before they kill me. But at this point, uh, I've already got quite a bit more situational awareness knowing uh, where I'm going to be getting shot at from and if I even have any business, you know, making a run in in this helicopter. So I'll... Uh, Push the bird to her limits here to try to evade some of that fire, and I'm uh, going to do my best to fire at a uh, max range here with my rockets. Forgive my poor marksmanship. Okay, there's one shooter. And there's the other shooter. Excellent. Alright, getting the hell out of dodge. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a BDA, and I'm going to assess uh, how I did. So I'll immediately get out of the area snapper into a, a hover here this would probably be a little closer than I would do if I had you know didn't already know that all the targets were killed and uh, let's just say that I'm a couple K away I'll look for those smoke plumes and uh, do a BDA and I can see that yes I did indeed destroy the two primary threats so I'm gonna hop over to the pilot seat again and uh, make the rest of these trucks pay Once again, uh, unfortunately you can't fire your cannon from the co-pilot seat, but uh, I can look at that cannon and get a BDA, or I'm sorry, I'll look at my TV display and get a battle damage assessment and have an idea of how much I've done uh, you know, towards the enemy and what threats still remain. So anyway, um, hope this was uh, somewhat helpful to you guys. A, a lot of it's kind of obvious, but at the same time, I know the Gazelle can be a little overwhelming, so... You know, I uh, happened to really enjoy this helicopter and made a couple mods for it. If you guys are interested, just check out the modding section of the Ed Forms there and uh, look up the Gazelle Weapons Expansion mod. I uh, actually had some help from uh, Spider Pig uh, with Poly Chop, one of the actual developers, and super cool making the mod, and we're still working on it and expanding it. But as it stands now, it'll give you uh, Hellfires, 
Vickers, some new rockets, and a new uh, BGM-71 tow missiles, which is what the AH-1 Cobra uses. So, anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I'll catch you in a video here soon.